Welcome back to Rule of Thirds, an offshoot of our Screen Refresh podcast. Our goal every episode is to take a little break from watching and analyzing movies to dive headfirst into some nostalgia or just get a little creative. So every month we select a different topic and create a top three list that may or may not be near and dear to each of our hearts. Shoot us a message on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Screen Refresh, or send an email to ScreenRefresh at gmail.com to let us know what your top three are or suggest future topics. I'm your host, Tim, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Dean and Nick. Hello there. What a twist. <laughs> so today we're taking a look at our favorite twistiest twists. So settle in for some rule of thirds. So naturally, uh, spoilers abound for anyone out there who are still going to take a look at any of these things we're going to discuss, any of the things we're going to mention. Uh, I would say we'll announce whatever our pick is. And then I would say, if you're interested in seeing it, probably uh, skip ahead, pause, watch it, come back, whatever the case may be. But otherwise, you've been sufficiently warned. Yeah, I was thinking, like, we announced the pick, and then you we insert some uh, waiting room kind of music for maybe, like, ten seconds. <laughs> yeah. Or five seconds. <laughs> this is your final warning. Do we want to get into this, our, our twistiest twist? Let's get into it. I can start from the top if... Um, I think it's my turn. Is it? Oh, okay, yeah. I think I'm the first one, though. I just got I w- so I went used last. to batting cleanup on the episode that I figured I'd let you, some of you guys go last. I can I, go middle. I went clean up on the last one. Okay, then Nick goes last. I'll I go think... middle. You go first. Yeah. Great. Have fun editing this, Nick. I always do. <laughs> so, my first pick here... I feel like we should, can we revise this episode to be, we chose three twists. It's hard. It's, I realized, I didn't realize how hard this would be actually once I started thinking about all the twists that exist in, all, in any story, games, movies, books, and television. Um, so my third pick, we're going to have a lot of honorable mentions that we're probably going to dish out. Now but, I'm saving it for another episode. <laughs> I had to Google twists. all of my choices. I did, but I did just to refresh the memory, and it definitely helped. And that made me realize, oh man, which one of these had like the biggest impacts? Um, so my number three pick here definitely uh, falls to some recency bias, but uh, I don't. Th- I think it's we're a year or no, we're like a couple years out from this one. So if you haven't seen the television show The Good Place. And you want to leave things unspoiled? Fast forward now to when? I don't know. Just keep just keep going until there's a different topic. I mean, the, the safe bet is 97 minutes from now. <laughs> Do you want to be sure? Skip ahead to 11 minutes 38 seconds. Um, so The Good Place was an NBC show starring Kristen Bell, Ted Danson, uh, and oh, I didn't write them down. There were two unknowns that became, three unknowns that became popular on the show. Um, but they all die at the beginning of the season, and it's about them and their life in The Good Place, aka Heaven. Um, so this whole first season is about them, they kind of have like... A hard go of it in heaven like things don't aren't actually uh great as you might expect and you see why at the end of the first season when it's revealed holy mother forking shirt balls what oh man wow okay <laughs> okay <laughs> That they are not in the good place. They are in the bad place. <laughs> A.K.A. hell. That kind of makes sense real quick, though. <laughs> yeah. Heaven is supposed to be utopian perfection. And within the first five minutes, you want to leave a bad Yelp review? Something's <laughs> Something ain't right. Yeah, so Ted Danson is kind of assigned to be there. Uh, he's kind of like running this town. It's like they say heaven's divided into towns. Yeah, like their private hell designer. Yes. He he designed this, uh, well, what we thought was heaven. This little slice of heaven was his design. Then you realize he's actually a demon, 
and he's running a whole new way to mess with humans forever, which is just slowly just like torturing them and making them make each other's eternities hells by the specific ways the personalities were chosen to live in this town together. Yeah, like all the PCs of Windows 11. <laughs> and you, you realize these the only four people in this town that are actually dead humans are them, these four people. The rest are demons that are just actors there to to uh fuck with them. And it was a I really didn't see it coming. Like it 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 made sense like all of the kind of imperf- imperfections of the world just the way they wrote it like it i really didn't suspect that they were in the in hell it, i guess like at that point. one of those things of once you know what it is going back it's like okay well that would make sense then. right like it just like okay it's like a whimsical heaven where it's like things aren't really perfect and like they got in there somehow and they all think they all are surprised most of them are surprised they're not in hell and they're in heaven but um, it, yeah, it it's a it was a great little reveal. Tell me one good thing that you did on Earth. Do you have a second to talk about the environment? Do you have a second to eat my farts? Oh, I can't risk going to the bad place. Okay, well, maybe it's not all that bad. We'll ask Janet. Hey, Janet. Hi there. Ah, how can I help you? What is the bad place like? I can only play you a brief audio clip of what is happening there right now. <laughs> Well, it doesn't sound awesome. Michael Shore was the developer of this. He did. He was on The Office 30 Rock. Um, 30 Rock. <laughs> Not 30 Rock. Um, why did I say 30? Parks and Rec. Um, Parks and Recreation. So Michael Shore did The Office. He did Parks and Recreation and Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which I think all those shows are pretty well regarded. Yeah. And this one, I think, well, it, you know, is in line with them, like really good characters it's funny but beyond that just the talking about the twist specifically it was like a good reveal for season one and there's four seasons total and it sets up the arc for the whole rest of the series and i thought it it played out really well it was i, I really recommend the series as a whole uh if you haven't seen it <laughs> you know one of the big parts of season <laughs> one there's still lots of more to the show after season one so it's not an entire uh yeah entire ruining of the plot Sometimes you do need the spoiler, though, in order to kind of get into it. Right. Yeah, it is. I think of those, of his four shows, I'm, I'm probably done more. I don't really know. But those big ones, like, it's probably the least, probably the least watched out of them all. Maybe Brooklyn Nine Nine is maybe the lesser, but they're all really great characters. That's what he's, he's really strong at making, like, interesting people and, and writing, like, humor out of them. I mean, and, also, uh, I feel like it's the highest concept out of the ones he did there. Yeah, for sure. It's, yeah, I mean, there's, I, I recommend it highly. Like, it's, if you like those three shows, any one of them, like, I think you should give this a chance, for sure, um, on top of the great writing. Because The Good Place, I originally, I didn't start watching it until I was on a flight, and the flight had, like, the, the TV access, and part of what they showed before everything was like, oh, here's our commercials from like CBS or NBC or whatever it is. And it was revealed the season finale of The Good Place season one because they're like, before this, we're going to show you a sneak preview of season two of The Good Place. And it started with them finding out it's the bad place. And I was like, okay, well, I feel like this probably gave away a lot from this <laughs> last show. Oh, that sucks. But then I went back and I watched it, which like... I feel like it would have been much more fun having that big reveal in it and not knowing that ahead of time, but it was still a blast like watching it, knowing that the entire time. But also I feel like the the humor and a lot of the characters and things felt less like the other three shows. Like I wouldn't necessarily equate that to something like The Office or equate that to something like Parks and Rec. Um, it felt closer to something like, um, if anybody's ever seen Better Off Ted, uh, it was a short-lived, like, two-season show about, like, a very shady uh, business of some sort. It was, a, like, a science and research building um, and all the, the corporate stuff that goes into it. But it was another kind of workplace comedy. But it felt much closer to the comedy in The Good Place. Um, but still, it's... I would agree. Like, it, it's definitely 
worth checking out. Um, even if you weren't a fan of the other three that Dean mentioned, I think it's still worth checking out. Yeah, because, just because it's different. Yeah, it is. You, yeah, you're right. Parks and Rec and Office obviously share a very similar formula. Um, Brooklyn Nine Nine is probably closer to this, just in that it's single camera and it's uh, or not single camera, but it's not documentary style and it's just kind of rapid fire jokes. And I think The Good Place is a little less frenetic, I'd say, compared to Brooklyn yeah. Nine-Nine. But, um, like, the jokes, the, the comedy has a little more time to breathe, but it's still very funny, like, each episode, I'd say. And very poignant, too. A lot of dramatic moments, too, that work. And um, if anybody is interested in another uh, comedy based on the afterlife, check out Amazon's Upload with Robbie Amell. Um, it's only had one season so far. I think he got renewed for season two, but it's another one that's comedy, but also a, a bit of drama to it, but another kind of afterlife type thing. That's definitely a fun companion piece to good place. If you're watching both, I'll watch it. Watch it. That's all I've got to say about the good place. Good. <laughs> place. <laughs> place. <laughs> what a twist so yeah so i guess my number three um is not so much kind of like a, a twist to a series or twist to a movie it's kind of a twist to like an arc or a twist to a, a specific episode of a series um for scrubs for anybody that has seen scrubs jump over to 21 minutes 22 seconds So if you know what I'm talking about, you'll probably know where we're going with this. If you don't, and you don't want to be spoiled, I would skip ahead. So Scrubs itself, this was a, a like a very big show for me for years, um, just because the I could relate to the whole main characters, the daydreaming main characters, the like the indie music choices that they do throughout it, and all these types of things. So it just kind of connected with my mid 2000s self um and then on top of that we have this specific arc going from season one into i think it's season three um of a guest star of brendan frazier playing ben the brother to dr cox's ex-wife well it's weird is it has taken my best friend so long to come and see my son i mean you get diagnosed with leukemia and then you disappear for two years what is that about well it went into remission and i want to go out and see the world for all its splendor and glory how'd that go for you yeah. got some good pictures though yeah. here check it out who oh, they're me kind of friends with throughout this so he pops up and i think it's like three episodes um a two-parter originally back in season one then he pops up in this episode here uh, i think it's called my screw up so having Brendan Fraser pop up is, is immediately an improvement to anything, uh, just especially around this time. So the episode sees Brendan Fraser, as I said, returning as the, the brother of the ex-wife. And in season one, he ends up getting a leukemia diagnosis um, that they think that, oh, maybe they made a mistake. Maybe they didn't do the test correctly and they end up finding out, no, he does have leukemia. So they end up kind of immediately getting him in to do like... Um, all of the the work needed uh, to handle this, to get it under control and everything. And then we don't see him again. And then he pops up again in this season uh, after he's kind of doing a, a world travel session because he his cancer went into remission and he's traveling the world to celebrate and he's taking all of his photos because he likes to do photography. So during the episode, we have another patient that has heart trouble while Dr. Cox is away he goes into cardiac arrest and dies, and we're set up to assume that the patient who died was the one with the heart trouble, because he even tells uh, Zach Braff, JD, he tells him, yeah, the, I'm going to be gone for like 30 minutes, or you're going to be gone for 30 minutes. This guy is not going to keel over and die in, during that time frame. Um, so when we get back, we end up having the patient die of cardiac arrest. Dr. Cox. What's the matter with you there, Sheila? You look like Maybelline just went belly up. 20 minutes after you left, he went into cardiac arrest. We tried to resuscitate him, but there's nothing we can do. I'm sorry. Oh, man, bummer. This shouldn't have happened. Guilt's a funny thing. 
It can lead to denial. So we think nothing of it. We think just Dr. Cox feels guilty because he told JD that, hey, that patient isn't going to die while you're working on something for me to go do run some tests on Ben. So we think that it's going to be that one. So throughout this whole thing, we're planning a birthday party for Dr. Cox's son. They're working together. He's talking with Ben. And as time goes on, we eventually kind of realize that they're not going to the son's birthday party. They're graveside at Ben's funeral, and he was the one who went into cardiac arrest and died while he was away. And it's just kind of a a hard left field because it's, at the time, I don't think I caught on to it, but then watching back now knowing that, it's that interesting view of, yeah, at one point, characters are interacting with him after a certain point it's only dr cox is talking with him he's saying things also but characters are reacting that it doesn't necessarily mean they're reacting to him they're just reacting to other things so it's it's kind of a hard left turn at the end um that turns the for a a normally a comedic show which certainly had its dramatic moments by the nature of being kind of a hospital show but it's a rough one, especially with, I think it's uh, Joshua Radin's Winter is the song they play as they're walking at, at the funeral. Um, but yeah, and then they have the JD kind of talking to Dr. Cox and Dr. Cox thinks that he's talking to Ben. And then he just asks him, like, where do you think you are right now? And that's when you kind of realize that they're not at the birthday party. They're at the, the funeral, which I, I thought was kind of a, a cool thing just for the fact that jd spends the entire series daydreaming so it's not so much as like what do you like you're babbling what are you talking about it's he kind of it's almost like he understands that he also is not like quote unquote there at the moment he's somewhere else um so i think it was just kind of a a nice scene between two characters and a nice kind of send off for brendan Fraser's guest star role yeah, that show knows how to punch you in the gut. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember that... Uh, I don't know if I remember that like arc specifically, but I definitely recall that episode. Um, it was like super effective. Yeah. I get emotional pretty easy when it's like sad stuff, so that, that stuff gets me. But this is a great show. And um, Yeah. I, I remember... Like, I, didn't, I didn't go back and look at it, but this came up kind of when I was looking for things. Um, and I... That, made me think about that show and that's another great overall show like just regardless of the twists but do you need a minute (laughs) i do tim's making me cry right here just telling me the story you sounded choked up very (laughs) verklempt wait wait for my number two and my number one (laughs) but yeah like definitely i think scrubs is still worth checking out i haven't watched the entire series i think since it was out originally um, so I, I don't know how well it holds up in terms of kind of beginning to end. Um, but I know at least like this, the, the arc with Ben for like, I mean, it's a short arc. It's like three episodes he pops up. Um, and I think one of them was a two parter. So it's not like he was in it throughout seasons. Uh, but still it's, it's effective for kind of just doing this thing in 30 minutes. And I still think that that whole piece holds up overall as a, a good twist. And then especially once you know it, kind of going back and rewatching it, it's definitely worth seeing just just twice. That's another show that I, I don't think I... I definitely haven't seen every Scrubs, but I used to watch it a lot. Like, they ran that show all the time. That's something yeah. that would be... I should... I would... <laughs> a very, very long list of things to watch, but uh, I would be interested in going back and rewatching that series. Yeah, because it's on Prime Streaming right now. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure. Speaking of Brendan Fraser, sorry, is anybody I'm just curious? Watch the uh, what is is that an Amazon show? The um, Doom Patrol. Yeah, right. Uh, it's on HBO Max now. It was HBO originally Max. on DC Universe, their own kind of system. Oh, okay. Um, Doom Patrol is fun. It's a good show. I fell off after I think the I watched the first season when it came out, and then once the first season do- was done, and I was waiting for the next one to come out. Um, I don't think I've gone back just yet. Uh, but it's it's fun i enjoyed it it's um i don't want to say it felt like a dc version not a dc version but like 
in the same vein as like Umbrella Academy, as you have these quirky characters and kind of like these wacky sci-fi situations they're getting into while still being kind of a superhero-y type show. Um, but it's it's good. I was just curious how he, you know, I think the internet wants a uh, a uh, renaissance, <laughs> um, a Brendan, a Fraser renaissance. So I was just curious I, if like I'm completely for it. Yeah, yeah, he's he's missed from from movies and television. So I was just curious how he's doing on there. If it seems like he might pop off again, uh, turns on bedazzled there. too. <laughs> I'm sp- I don't know if I put Bedazzled on my my top comedies list that it, when we did the Rule of Thirds episode. I don't think you mentioned it. You did not. Yeah. Ah, it's terrible. Wait, it's terrible? I thought you liked it. Same thing. I always think about it afterwards. Ah, uh, right. It's like I didn't put Mask of the Phantasm on my animated movies episode. Well, that's why we uh, leave it open to extras after. Or oh, that's we we keep going back to the same subject. So yeah, Scrubs. Which brings us to, Nick, your number three. Jesus Christ. All right, so to... That's a twist. That's a twist. <laughs> <laughs> we thought you were dead. Three days later. Surprise, bitches. Surprise, motherfucker. Um, well, after that melancholy discussion, I had this as an honorable mention, but I think it's fitting after Scrubs. So I'm going to actually say The Mandalorian. Skip to 31 minutes, 12 seconds. I have spoken. Uh, No one could have ever expected Baby Yoda to be in it. And that was probably one of the best kept secrets I've ever heard of in modern pop culture. Oh, just... Grogu yeah. existing. Yeah. Leading up to that point, there was plenty of advertisement, plenty of, you know, hype to I remember watching the trailers, they always never showed him. Bounty hunting is a complicated profession. Don't you agree? There was zero merchandising for Baby Yoda on its release because there's no way you could accommodate for getting merchandise all that shit has to be done months in advance so they had nothing ready for day one because they wanted day one to be the big reveal and that was probably one of the best kept secrets and twists i've ever seen in any kind of in like it in today's world where you can't do anything without there being a 100 twitter posts and like 15 different subreddits discussing leaks and spoilers that they're able to get away with this so well like that i think is a pretty damn good job well i feel like it's almost a bummer nowadays that you can't do like there i feel like there's no secrets anymore whatsoever in movies and shows because as soon as somebody writes the idea down it there's like a leak from somewhere or somebody took like a candid photo or something of somebody in a costume or somebody's assistant leaked that oh they had a meeting that they were on set with so and so um so it's drone photography (laughs) yeah i mean like the whole thing of i don't know if it's going to be the case of like the spider-man thing of them talking about like oh we're gonna have all three of the spider-man in the same movie because they were able to like catch photos of one of them visiting the set and it's yeah literally nothing is a secret anymore whether that's correct or not we'll find out but Someone made a meme of that with um, when it's that episode of SpongeBob with um, who's the villain to Mermaid Man? Oh yeah, uh, Manta Ray. Yeah. Man Ray. Man, Man Ray. Ray. Yeah. So they're trying. SpongeBob and Patrick are trying to rehabilitate him. So <laughs> it's like, hey, look, this is a stolen wallet. You know, give it back to Patrick, and they do the whole exchange like, this is your wallet. No, but it has your name <laughs> on it. Yup. <laughs> and it has your driver's license in it. Uh, looks like it to me. So this must mean that it's your wallet. Nope. And they had the same thing with Andrew Garfield. On how, like, so you're on the set of Spider-Man. Uh, I think so. And I see pictures of you with Tom Holland. Yep. So that must mean you're in the new movie. Nope. 
<laughs> so who knows? I like your I like your Patrick impersonation there. Thank you. <laughs> um, I guess coming back to Grogu, yeah, it with the way it the series, well, the two seasons. I don't know what's in the future other than Boba Fett. I guess. Um, with the way that it ends, with Luke taking baby yoda do you think they'll come because that raises questions like where the fuck does he end up like will they do you think they'll come back to that at some point like it when grogu's know. older and like do more with grogu next That's season it. they're just gonna be like a he died off screen <laughs> luke's gonna be like i forgot to feed him he choked on a cat he's well, out there's there's like a fan theory that he was one of the ones killed when kylo ren kind of took over the temple Oh, uh, that's rough. Well, I mean, think about it. <laughs> it's the only logical timeline unless, unless he went back to um, Mando, but I don't know. Who knows? Because it's funny because it's like Grogu seems obviously maybe um, Yoda, Yoda's race. Maybe there's just more in tune with the Force, but he's seemed pretty fucking strong for a child, so... It's hard it's to like, tell. Could Kylo he's, Ren have killed him? Like, I don't know about that. I don't, he's a walking plot hole, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's cute. He definitely, it's cool that he exists. I just, like, I wonder if they'll come back to, like, Adventures of Grogu at some point. Who knows? But, yeah, it's just the fact that Disney was able to hide him so well yeah, leading right. up to that point. Because people were thirsty for every kind of possible spoiler when it comes to anything star wars and this was before the end of the prequel tri- or the sequel trilogy i don't remember when it actually came out versus when the other movies did but it looked like the raw gritty star wars a lot of the hardcore fans were looking for so they were definitely looking for any kind of spoiler and that never came up i'll admit i was looking for spoilers too come uh, rise of skywalker by the time we're sitting there and they're sitting there in the theaters i'm already i already knew like three quarters of the plot and I was just kind of crying and dying inside, knowing that everything actually was true that I read. And I was really hoping that it was just... Every some... time something happens on screen that confirms something you read, it's like, ooh, that yeah. seems a little more truthful. Mm-hmm. So, whereas with Mando, I had no idea. I had no idea. Now, as far as with Mandalorian, so before the reveal of Grogu oh. being like the, the child and being the the whole... Um, that plot point was there anything else that was being discussed that you know of or was there anything else lore wise that people were expecting to be the like the the reveal or the thing no idea or is it was just literally like flying by the seat of their pants nobody knew what was happening next nobody knew what was happening next we just knew it was set after return of the jedi and you got to see some remnant imperials and that's really about it yeah the um the the season one trailer for Amanda was, was August of 2019, and then the last movie came out in December of that year. Oh, okay. So it was before the disappointment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because wasn't the, the end of Mandalorian, which also spoiler, um, wasn't the end of that season for Mandalorian supposed to introduce the concept of using the force to heal it was like, yeah, get comfortable with this idea. So when you see it on the big screen, you're not like, bullshit. That's not my force. Yeah. I thought it was real demeaning that not my force. they had to do that. It was stupid. I mean, just the whole concept behind it. But that's a digression for another day. But yes, the uh, Mandalorian. Even the Luke thing in the second season, that was pretty well hidden. And they talk about it in, if you have Disney Plus and you look at the behind the scenes for the show, they talk about how they tried to show off a second Jedi Plo Koon, if you know who I'm talking about. He was supposed to be the one to pick up Grogu, but instead, they, you know, it was Luke. But leading up to that point in time, I don't know how you can hide it because it's literally, you're wearing Luke's clothes. You're wearing Luke's lightsaber. You have a astromech that happened to be green, but it's an easy switch to go from green to blue, so whatever. But um, you have everything that screams that it's Luke, and you mean to tell me that's uh, that's not Luke? Okay. <laughs> X-Wing. Yeah, right. How'd you get Luke's lightsaber? A story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trigger Nick. <laughs> what? Yeah, right. <laughs> we got to get the rest of the episode. And that one's even worse, considering, because at least the first one fell off into a like nothingness. 
the last time we checked he had this one so it would have been great if after that movie you always see luke's lightsaber with like a bungee cord with a carabiner clip on it <laughs> <laughs> never again <laughs> Instead of Luke, Kylo Ren shows up. Greg was like, uh, no. <laughs> Just like starts choking him. <laughs> Although at that point, I think Kylo Ren probably would have been, what, like three or something like that? They're both the same size fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and he was still good. He was. So, yeah, I I think the, the reveal of Grogu, um, I mean, I... You are much more up on Star Wars than I am, seeing as I only gain my knowledge um, through osmosis from you. True. <laughs> so, I mean, I definitely was not expecting anything like that. What a twist! Which brings us to Dean, your number two. So, my last pick was a show. I'm going to pivot to video games. Um... So, as you know, I love horror. <laughs> yeah, I can never get uh, you to stop talking about it. Of no. course, naturally. <laughs> we always uh, say, Dean, shut up about horror. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a scaredy cat listener. This is your first exposure to me talking about horror. But this game is not a horror game, but it turns slightly horror -y with this twist. At least for me, I had a visceral, visceral reaction to it, and it was a great, I mean, it was very effective. Uh, and that game would be Halo Combat Evolved. <laughs> Forty-two minutes, fifty-five seconds to skip Halo. There's a good chance most people listening to this have played that game. I think we have a... Uh, good crossover of gamers and uh and the uh, movie watchers alike um and all things pop culture and halo is definitely one of those huge pop cu pop culture properties um but the first game really the story is about you know you're playing as master chief and you crash land on this mysterious ring world which we later find out is called halo and you're being pursued by the Covenant. It's like a kind of a race of, like a several races of aliens. I don't know. There's a, different kinds, but they're all collectively called the Covenant. And uh, they, you discover they're they're after Halo because they think it's a weapon, and you don't want them to gain control of it. And also, Master Chief carries the location of Earth, and we don't want them to know where Earth is either. So the whole story, you're pretty much just trying to defeat the Covenant and stop them from gaining access to Halo and whatever it does, because nobody knows at this point. Um, but there's a moment where you get inside the uh, uh, control, essentially, of Halo, and all of a sudden it introduces this uh, alien form called the Flood. And they're just essentially like parasitic, zombie-ish looking i guess kind of not like not anthropomorphic human zombies but just kind of bloated revolting weird little creatures like face huggers kind of running around and i got a bad feeling about this boy you always got a bad feeling about Captain something Sark, can you hear me? what's going on soldier Do you copy? Over. Or almost like a resident. You're almost like Resident Evil. Like they remind me of like the head crabs from Half Life. I was thinking more of just a, an amalgamation of this thing. Yeah. 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 The thing's a good thing. Yeah, because it kind of they 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 make it. There are certain enemies, but they kind of make it feel like it, they could change. They 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 do kind of take over bodies and change and. Uh, adapt and such and it's like it just turns into this like holy shit we've got to get out of here like it's like a survival horror kind of at that point although you're still like firing at, but it's master like chief fires one round into his own head <laughs> it's just oh, no. it's like it makes it very 
creepy and scary because you have your your radar which has like you see red dots for your enemies and it's just all of a sudden it's like from all sides like red is just is that a very alien the movie alien kind of feeling where it's like they're coming it's like right on top of us (laughs) and all of a sudden they're just everywhere and you're you're getting out and it was just like yeah i just had a very strong reaction to it like it was like i could handle it obviously but it was still like oh it really got my blood pumping like just because it was like i was scared where's that coming from mendoza i don't there mira Hold still! still. Hold Get still! Let him have it! Sergeant, we're surrounded! God damn it, Jenkins! Fire your weapon! There are too many, sir! Don't even think about it, Marine! Well, it was such a hard left turn hitting that after doing, like, it's all this kind of sci-fi and then all of a sudden have an entire back end that just delves into you're now on this ship and it's just these creatures and things and i think like the captain was one of the ones that got killed or something like you were he was like being held there or that's where he was holed up and then you find him he's taken over you need to use his body you need to use the something code that he has to like for halo but you the the twist kind of continues where like that's kind of like a feeling twist and like oh my god there's a a third enemy here another enemy that's like the uh common enemy of the covenant and the humans but then you realize halo is not just a weapon it's meant to contain the flood and destroy all life in the galaxy so the flood can't propagate so you you're going to activate it before you know what it does and then the little what's it called <laughs> spark 343 guide spark or something robot um turns on you and tries to kill you because you're refusing to activate halo um master chief's like i'm not gonna kill all people in the galaxy so let's just blow this thing up and get the hell out of here um and it leads to a great ending uh, warthog escape where like lasers are firing and there's flood and the computer's trying to kill you it's like very exciting but yeah, it just turns the entire, like, what you thought you were doing on its head once you realize what Halo's for and the scary flood. I have never thought about it that way. And you are spot on. <laughs> Thank you. I've only Next. played Halo <laughs> once, to be honest. Like, the actual campaign. Everyone's played yeah. Halo hundreds of times. But right. when it comes to the actual campaign, I've only ever played it once when it came out, like, 15 years ago. Because I think you were done in like settled with the campaign back in the day when you used to haul the xbox the original xbox over to my house which that's what made me want an xbox specifically is you bringing halo over and then having to play halo in its entirety (laughs) it's a good game it is yeah but i mean yes yeah it's like a obviously it's a genre definer and a big and a great co-op experience yes i can never picture them not launching a halo game with co-op campaign but yeah that was just one of those like visceral reactions to like a plot like a a total tone shift and a total like yeah the plot i guess is more so about halo being a weapon but the and the flood just like it was just a whole reversal of it just it's just scary i was scared shitless man the fucking flood then it creates this response of every halo game you play after that as soon as there is anything that could possibly be like wait a second (laughs) is this the flood again (laughs) ready for round two oh no oh no no i mean i thought it was a really great addition and i thought it really shook things up and it kind of added a lot to it but at the end of the day i always think i preferred the non-flood parts myself because oh yeah they were a pain in the ass i hated the flood yeah like it drives me crazy when you get to the points in games where it's like oh these are the enemies that are just bullet sponges or these are the ones that like they get near you and then they explode. So you have to like make sure you shoot them down with a thousand bullets before they get like, it takes some of the fun out of doing like the pistol challenge in Halo of just only pistols, headshots everywhere. Throwing oh yeah, I can take only. down like a hunter. I can take down like the elites. <laughs> um, and then you get to this and it's like, there's no head to shoot. Yeah, I just like the the chaos was exciting as it was like anxiety inducing. 
Yeah. Of just like I have to, you just have to run and get the fuck out of there. Or that's when the shotgun shines. Yes. Shotgun very helpful at that moment. So I think that's a I never would have thought about that. I think Halo is a, a solid pick, both for the flood and the actual Halo. Yeah. I was just trying to like think of can I pick a movie, a game, and it's just span the the medium, but I completely forgot to consider games, but now like yeah, there's a ton of them that would make sense here. It would have been great if Master Chief actually activated the Halo and never realized what it does. <laughs> <laughs> Destroyed everybody. What a twist! Like well, if I live you here with the flood. You skip the section that like has that lore data dump of like what it is. <laughs> um, do either of you have games on your other picks? I do now. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say as soon as you mentioned it, I thought of the one that Nick probably just wrote down. Oh, so I was gonna bring up another one that was not a. I was going to say it was not a great plot twist. Well, it kind of like made people upset, I would say. Um, and that's Metal Gear 2. Metal Gear 2. Metal Gear. Which which twist? Well, the fact that you're not playing as Snake after the first act there. Yeah, that that's less of a twist and more of a <laughs> insult. <laughs> I mean, it's still a twist, but it's of the knife. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I wish I could have played as naked ride in the entire time. You would holding your balls the whole time. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's lots of game of game ones. I just thought this was the most impactful for me. I I probably know what one Nick just added to his list. You don't know me. <laughs> oh, I know which one you just added. I didn't add anything. The the only one recently in terms of games that comes to mind, um, other than like the the one. I don't want to step on any toes. Um, is if anybody's played, I think, Far Cry 5. I haven't finished it, but I think, Dean, you and I started playing it together or something yes. like that. But the whole thing of, like, the the end of the world cult and all of this stuff on the the various, the father and, like, the cult member kids. And you're going around and stopping all of them. And if I recall, um, I've never actually finished the game, but I think at the end of the game, you find out that there actually is the end of the world scenario and the bombs drop and it just like apocalypse. Yep. <laughs> and that's the end. Yep. They were right. I told you so. <laughs> that's, that's actually what the last lines are before his skeleton <laughs> just gets turned to glass. <laughs> I told you so. <laughs> Drink this Kool-Aid quick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a, a solid solid pick, Dean. Um, which I guess brings us to my number two, which is uh, pause and go watch this movie immediately if you haven't already. It is Primal Fear. Primal Fear needs to skip to 50 minutes, 43 seconds. 1996 primal fair uh like i'm i'm a sucker for courtroom dramas in movies i don't care so much for all of the procedural courtroom shows but like a good courtroom drama movie um is always fun for me and then adding on like a smarmy richard Gere role tasked with defending a like a first um featured movie edward norton doing double duty as a uh, split personality, two characters like Roy and Aaron, a kid who gets accused of murder. I didn't do this. You gotta believe me. I don't have to believe you. I don't care. I'm your attorney. What about the truth? The illusion of truth. You can play the game. What do you think he's up to? I honestly don't know. You can unravel the mystery. There was someone else in that room. It was the third person. You're in danger, Scram. But you must keep the secret. Richard Gear. Primal Fear. Rated R. But it was enough to hook me in to watch the movie itself. So the whole thing is, um, I think it's like young Aaron Edward Norton is working as an altar boy at this church um, when a priest is murdered and kind of all signs point to him. So Richard Gere takes the case for the publicity before finding out that Aaron has another personality, the angry and violent Roy. And then he kind of starts clicking of, okay, so I probably wasn't going to be able to win this case. So what I'm going to end up having to do is plead insanity because 
this kid is crazy. <laughs> um, so like the movie, it's like it's worth it going along for the ride as Richard Gere switches his tactics from there to try to get him off the death sentence, saying he's mentally unfit, go for the insanity plea. And then when they finally are able to win the case, kind of pulling all of his team together, Richard Gere is the hero. He's treated to a meeting with uh, Aaron and Roy one final time in his cell. And then that's when the facade finally cracks and he slips up and you find out that there is no split personality. There is no Aaron and Roy. That Edward Norton's just been playing him for a sap the entire time just so he can get off the death sentence and not <laughs> get murdered. Um, and it's just like that final scene of Richard Gere realizing it and Edward Norton finally like admitting it. And then Richard Gere realizing like, Hey, Mr. Vale. Yeah. Um, will you t t tell Miss Venable I'm sorry? Tell her I, I hope her neck is, is okay. What did you just say? What? You told me you don't remember. You black out. So how do you know about her neck? Well, good for you. Marty, I was going to let it go. You was looking so happy just now, I was thinking, mm -hmm. but to tell you the truth, I'm glad you figured it, because I have been dying to tell what you. What am I going to do now? <laughs> like, I, he, he beat the case, and I, it's confidentiality. What is he going to do? Go in and be like, I just talked with my client, and he admitted to murder. So it's just him kind of trying to reason out what am I going to do next, and him like walking outside the courthouse as the movie just ends. And it's this final scene and final shot that just kind of hangs with all of this that just gets laid on at the very last, like, seven minutes of this movie. So he just, it kind of ends being like, well, that sucks. <laughs> One of those twists. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, he, it's him realizing, like, I just let a murderer go free because of my work and I can't fix this now. And I screwed up. Then he just goes home and like looks at his bank account, like, eh. <laughs> what if that was the ending? <laughs> well, I got paid. <laughs> he gets like a, a notification. It's like the check is cleared. He's well, like, oh, it would oh, suck man. if oh, he was okay. hired as a public defender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got paid six hundred bucks for all that. Fuck. <laughs> What a twist! He goes back, turns in his rental suit from the for the court. <laughs> goes back goes to his motel. Night, it was night job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I think I was aware of this movie. I didn't realize. I remember Richard Gere on the cover. This is like a blockbuster memory. I think of seeing this movie all the time. Um, yeah, it's like sepia tone cover of just like Richard Gere standing on the court steps. Yeah, I didn't know uh, Norton was in this movie. Um, yeah, I think it's his it's his first actual because I think before this he did a role in like a TV movie, but this was his first actual movie, uh, and he cr comes out swinging <laughs> for a career. He crushes this movie. <laughs> yeah, he stuck around. I mean, he's still around, kind of popping up occasionally. Yeah, um, I think he's in uh, the French Dispatch or something like that. The new oh uh, yeah, Wes Anderson movie because of course he is. Once you're in a Wes Anderson movie, you're it's like the mom. When you're here, your family. Yeah. <laughs> There's no getting out. Once you enter this family, there's no getting out. Uh, just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. <laughs> yeah, so is it is it so the whole movie kind of is like just this courtroom drama and like it it just turn upends it right at the end, like or is there Yeah. So it's pretty much it's once he figures out like oh the kid has the split personality because all of a sudden he exploded on me and he's referring to himself in a different name and it's like yeah i come out and i watch over gotcha. which also funny enough that edward norton eventually goes on to play the hulk um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that in this he has like the angry personality that takes over to protect the softer one so then it becomes this whole thing of okay so he calls in his friend that's like the the psychologist or something like that and they're doing the tests on him to see like Okay, so how do these both these personalities react? How are both of them doing this? Um, he's going off and he's trying to find more details on all of this and the history on the kid. And then it keeps kind of going back to the actual courtroom where they're kind of proving their case. 
um, on all of this. But yeah, then it's it's that final like seven minutes of, yay, the case is done. We won. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, got you. And I forget what the slip up was, but I think like Edward Norton just like says something that then Richard Gere is like, wait, what was that? <laughs> and then he just like starts clapping and it's like, I screwed up eventually. <laughs> Sounds good. So he's go watch in, it. Primal he, Fear. He's had a couple um, twisty roles, I would say there. Edward, Edward Norton. Norton. Yeah. Yeah. So go watch it. Nick, you're number two. Let's go with uh, Saw. The original first one. At one hour, seven seconds, you'll have skipped past Saw. Oh, I'm trying to play the theme in my head, or the dun, music. Dun, dun. It's like... Dun, dun. Yeah, dun, 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 dun. yeah, that's right. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, okay. feel the movies now are tired only because they have to do a twist for every single ending. But the first one really was the one that set that standard going forward. So you're watching this whole thing with two guys locked in a room. And they're a killer or, you know, the person doing all this, their kidnapper is supposed to be off in some other some other place doing what Jigsaw does. Just to find out right before the credits roll that it's actually the killer was in that room with them the entire time. That was a really amazing twist. It's a very interesting person. His name is John. He has an inoperable frontal lobe tumor. I'm sick from the disease eating away at me inside. Sounds like our friend Jigsaw. I'm sick of people who don't appreciate their blessings. Looks like our guy likes to book himself front row seats to his own sick or demons. Hello, Mark. Hello, Dr. Gordon. I want to play a game. And say what you will about the current state of Saw movies. At the time when that was released, that was the buzz everyone was talking about. What a twist! Yeah, because it felt very, I mean, it was very indie feeling at the time. Very small scale. Like, it's literally just that, I mean, before, except for the flashbacks, it's like all in that room. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it essentially kicked off its own imitators and subgenre for years of this whole, like, quote-unquote torture porn thing with, like, uh... Right. Hostel. Would it be a hostel and uh, Teristas and Wolf Creek and all of those types of things. Um, even though this one was definitely not to that extent that some of the others ended up going into. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's it's funny because it's like it is a plot twist. Like the twist is just that he's there in the room the whole time. Like all that, all the all the shit still matters that's going on. Yeah, <laughs> like it doesn't change the plot itself. Uh, on overall, but just that the fact that he was there is like a really great, really great, just twist to the story. That was a st- stupid line. Cut that out. What a twist! <laughs> what a twist! Please use that after every <laughs> at the end of every uh, po- topic discussion. So, what if um, in that movie he like was laying there and then he actually had like a heart attack or something? <laughs> <laughs> he just actually dies then they all just like die of like uh thirst <laughs> the, the other two guys or he just like coughs once i think well <laughs> yeah. it, even if he died right on the floor the movie still would have portrayed out the way it did true except um i think gary uh gary hugh uh fuck, uh, carrie carrie, carrie Yules. Yules would be the one to he would actually be able to escape and he doesn't have to worry about getting locked in he got locked yeah. in right um or was the, the photographer no, he the photographer was the yeah uh, uh, lay Wannell. yeah lay yeah. lee i forget but yeah. yeah he also the the photographer is uh one of the writers ah makes sense he also did a bunch of fun things if you've ever seen the movie upgrade that's a good one is that with two d's with two d's as he says for a double dose of this pimping <laughs> <laughs> the second the second saw twist is that it's like the the girl from the or is that the third saw movie the second one the twist was you were under the impression everything was happening in real time and then you find out that this happened last week and nothing like when they go to raid that when they finally figure out where the the saw house is and they try to rescue everybody they realize all of this stuff happened like a week ago 
And then gotcha. What a twist! Then the third one, I think, the mastermind is the woman from the second one. Like she like runs Saw at that point. I think. What a twist! <laughs> I think it's, that's where I dropped off. <laughs> I've honestly, I think I've only ever seen the second movie, and I every ending gets more and more convoluted from my understanding. <laughs> Because I think at some point in the series, like, Carrie Ewells comes back as one of the villains or something like that. Yeah. It was uh, the he last... ends up becoming, like, a disciple of him or something. It was the last one before... The Spiral, Book of Saw. Yeah. It's the uh, it's the opposite of the Fast and the Furious franchise, where the villains become allies. Like, here, like, the good people become jigsaws. <laughs> It's like a pay it forward in a really fucked up way. <laughs> <laughs> pay it back. <laughs> it is a good movie series, and I, I did enjoy them for at least the first three, I think. But it got progressively worse and worse, where one movie was dedicated to him going after the insurance company that denied him his medical coverage. That's when I really started to think, maybe the series isn't as good as I remember. <laughs> Hey, I worked for an insurance company. I get it, man. <laughs> I want to see. Um, I know Tim's one of Tim's hated tropes, uh, where like say like Jigsaw's alive, and then it flashes back to all these moments from earlier in the movie. <laughs> but it's just like his eyes open and look around and then close again, and then like he farts and Carrie's like, "Is that you?" <laughs> A fly lands on his me? face, and you see him just like. Mm, mm, I didn't try to get man. it. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a great skit. Just like, like very slowly, Jigsaw his hand not... reaches down and just like scratches. <laughs> Jigsaw trying not to be uncovered there. Well, I thought was there explanation that he took some sort of like mysterious drug that allowed him to. Um. Slows his heart down and all that. Yeah. One of those Romeo Juliet <laughs> concoctions. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, I don't remember. That might yeah. be what, that might be it, but it still is a funny idea. <laughs> For all of my, my gripes with that movie. I mean it's I don't have anything against it, just like I I'm I could take it or leave it, but the, the twist I think is definitely good in that one. Even if you suspend your disbelief that he took some miracle drug that allowed him to act like he was dead for God knows how many hours. Hey, now, your favorites <laughs> You're an all-star. are just as bad. Oh, if mine when you, are worse. When you break down and try to get realistic with all of the horror movies, there are way too many. <laughs> None of them. All of them need to have. When you, I'm about to watch a horror movie, you must have suspension of disbelief right out the gate. Because if not, <laughs> none of it makes sense. <laughs> I mean, in Friday the Thirteenth Part, like what was it, uh, seven with a psychic girl that does Carrie style battle with Jade? Like, I get suspension of disbelief. I think also it just depends on the universe. It does it make sense within the universe that it's been created within? Yeah, that's that's very important. Which I guess in this, if this guy is, I don't even know what his job was originally supposed to be. Um, he was a but board game able... designer. <laughs> yeah. The inventor of Mousetrap brings you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to play a game? It's fun getting into trouble. <laughs> what if that was his thing? Instead of all of these, like, the jaw smasher and whatnot, it was just, like, fatal deadly versions of children's board games. <laughs> I would like to play a game. And remember, don't wake daddy. <laughs> <laughs> to get through here, you must have perfection. <laughs> so, yeah, Saw, definitely a, definitely a good pick. Shit, now I really hope there's like a YouTube series of a guy talking as Saw, but reading board game instructions. <laughs> I know there's... Um... There's that like quick fan thing, Living with Jigsaw that's on <laughs> i was just sending it to you i think that's what yeah i think i've seen yeah that's what crossed my mind when you were starting to talk about it because <laughs> the, the one that i saw was working with jigsaw yeah it's the same series but gary 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 what 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 are you on strike what you are completely surrounded by armed mousetraps 
but I, I found it amusing. <laughs> so, should we get into the honorables? Should we do some honorable mentions? Well, Wait, do we? No, is that going to be a new thing? Do we do the honorables before we do number ones? Oh, why not? Are we watch Mojo? Sure. It's usually how it goes. Okay. Right? I don't know. I don't have any because I'm going to save them for another episode. I literally don't have any, so. <laughs> This was not my strong subject. Take it away, Dean. <laughs> um, I mean, mine aren't, they're not like little gems or anything. And I think that's why I that helped me steer my other picks. Like, I thought they would be a little bit like, not unconventional, but just like, oh, yeah. I mean, the good place is, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that, that, that idea doesn't make any sense. But because yeah, my other honorable mentions are like, I think they're pretty well-known twists. Um. So this probably would have made the list if it wasn't for season eight, just souring me on the entire thing. But, uh, (laughs) yes, the death of Ned Stark at the end of season one, um, I think was probably one of the most effective, uh, on Game of Thrones, if you didn't gather that, um, one of the most effective character deaths and like kill offs and like, Nobody was expecting this. He was the main character. What the hell? Nobody's safe kind of uh, moments in television. Um, Someone broke down the amount of time every character spoke through the whole show. Because there really isn't a main character. Right. It focuses on so many people. Sure. So in the first season, Ned Stark holds the spotlight so much that I think it took two, three seasons afterward for other characters to finally catch up. Wow, I didn't realize lines. that. Yeah, it was a cool little graphic that I saw. I'll yeah, I say main. Later. I say main character, quote unquote. But yeah, because every you know, there's so many storylines going on. But he just seemed like, oh, he's the central figure. Yeah, and boom, he's dead. Can they do like a Marvel's What If style of Ned Stark survived? If Bran didn't climb up that thing, if Bran didn't climb the thing, yeah, they would all just would have got killed by White Walkers, I guess, at that point. <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> That's my guess. Um, Game of Thrones. What a twist! I mentioned this before, but Ender's Game. I read the book well before the movie came out, but that mm-hmm. is a pretty good plot twist. Yeah. Which I think is telegraphed a lot more in so in the movie than it is in the books. I think it's because they make every movie version slightly dumber than the book versions. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be a little dumber, I guess. For some reason. But Ender... You know, actually controlling real and commanding real humans in a war as opposed to a video game, which he thinks it is just battle yeah, uh, simulations. Which I guess, like, in the universe, it makes sense to do it that way just because the kid's already doing all of their battle testing and things like that of leading their fake armies and this to tell them that they're leading actual people would probably break their minds. <laughs> yeah, it would have. It would have affected their judgment rather than like do anything to win, which is what the humans needed at that point. It was they would be less ruthless, I guess, with their decisions. What if they were more ruthless? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We need to ice these kids as soon as this is done. (laughs) They're getting a little scary. (laughs) The captain of that ship slighted me. (laughs) Send his entire fleet into death. Um. That's weird. Yeah. Why do all my characters wish me <laughs> luck and say things to me? You program so many names into this. Yeah, uh, was... yeah it's all a game. <laughs> uh, I, Ender's game probably might have made the list, except we just I talked about it before on another list, so I was like, eh, save that slot. Dean, that was last else. year. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> that was on uh, our second Rule of Thirds episode. <laughs> no! There's a couple other movies on here. I think maybe the... Yeah, I think those those are my honorable mentions. There's there's so many twists that I have I had pulled out and listed, but that's all I want to talk about. I do have uh, one honorable mention that came to mind that I'll bring up here. Um, is if anybody's seen the movie Feast, the horror movie, um, it's... It's a it's a lot. Um, 
But something that I'll always remember from the movie is they set you up in the beginning with all these people in a bar and there's like um, creatures that are coming or that are like outside. And all of a sudden this like Hollywood leading man rushes in the front door and barricades it and the whole thing of like there's creatures out there and stick with me if you want to survive. And all of a sudden he gets like pulled back through the door and gets his head taken off. And then, like, five minutes later, a, like, another uh, female lead comes bursting through the door, and she's like, has anybody seen my husband? And then she, like, kills one of them, and she's like, okay, if he's dead, that means I'm taking over. And then she gets killed. <laughs> and then it's everybody the left in the bar, and it's like, uh, and then all of them have to figure out what to do. Uh, what the fuck just happened? So, it's that, it, it always amused me as far as kind of the, um... <laughs> the whole lead character thing and the sudden character death like you mentioned with Ned Stark um, so yeah that's why Feast and Game of Thrones I feel are uh, one and the same <laughs> on par <laughs> Dean is um, Lord of the Rings on your list it is not then my honorable mention is Gandalf dying in the first one I did not have any Lord of the Rings exposure prior to the trilogy coming out in theaters and at first i didn't actually like lord of the rings i felt it was kind of slow and just there's a lot of world building and it took a long time for me to once i fully understood the world and was able to understand things fully once i watched fellowship again a lot of it made more sense and this and that so first time viewing i did not expect ian mckellen to fall in the you know in the minds of moria and then the whole rest of the movie carries out without him i had no idea that was even going to happen it was kind yeah, of a, a twist in thinking that he's your best guy he's he's dead oh shit so the paladin is i mean he's a wizard but i mean you know what i mean yeah. he's <laughs> the backbone has been destroyed yeah it was kind of a big deal so i the whole time i'm ex always expecting he's alive that stupid trope of they fall off the cliff and everyone freaks out and then off screen you see him climbing up like it's very oh, camp cretaceous i'm okay guys <laughs> <laughs> like eugene from hey arnold i'm okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wouldn't have expected that but that makes sense yeah it's kind of a, a ned stark situation yeah i think it would have been better if he didn't get pulled by the balrog he tripped he like he takes care of the Balrog and then he turns around and it's like never mind I'll come whoa <laughs> he goes down too. Of course, if like Samwise like dropped a stick or something and he just falls <laughs> as he falls because like, Samwise killed him indirectly. <laughs> <laughs> or, or no, I guess it would have been have to have been Pippin. Pippin would have had to kill him indirectly. Full of a took and he just... yeah, <laughs> as he falls. <laughs> Full of a took. <laughs> Like, can we get like a Lord of the Rings abridged, like they did with uh, DBC abridged of redos of all of these storylines? <laughs> Wait, what is that? DBC abridged is um, from a channel called Team Four Star, where they do it with a bunch of different shows, and they do all their own original stuff. But they took Dragon Ball Z, but they recut it, and they all redubbed their own characters and things. So over time, they start creating their own storylines or like their own callback jokes um as things go on that... there's like an unauthorized like youtube oh, yeah, channel or something yeah it's definitely unauthorized gotcha. um but yeah it, it's worth checking out just for the the fun of <laughs> dragon ball z but the the joke version um i think it would be fun with lord of the rings <laughs> what a twist Dean, what honor honorable mention what's your number one twist number of all one time twist. on this list today in, in this very moment, um, in true Dean fashion, I'm going to choose. Tim actually said this earlier as a joke. I think he was joking. Um, but as far as impactful, I saw this in the theater and my mind was blown. It's a cliche. Not a cliche, but it's, it's obvious. But the sixth sense. Got to go with the sixth sense. You won't see dead people or actually more Mando spoilers after an hour and 17 minutes, 37 seconds. Boo, hiss. It's a good one. I'd be remiss 
we'd be we'd be remiss if Shyamalan didn't make <laughs> make one of these. But um, this was he. This was the first one, right? Signs was after this. Yeah, yeah. He came out of the gate really strong. Like this was a really well written, well acted, well directed everything movie. Which is almost a shame that he came like made his name and hit the scene with this because it's yeah. like yeah, this, this is a terrific movie. You, no matter what you do from here, like love him or hate him, it's kind of hard to live up to. Yeah, I think that's his up. problem. Is that he tried to live up to it, and instead of not doing his own thing, but he also tried his own thing with Lady in the Water, and that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it's at that point he had started to get into the whole thing of the okay, people are expecting a twist. And then it was, well, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to go somewhere else. But now, I mean, it's it's like the Halloween situation. You can't make Halloween 1, Halloween 2, and then decide in Halloween 3 that, yeah, Michael Myers isn't in this one. This is going to be a, an <laughs> anthology series where each movie is completely different story. It's like, no, you, you can't decide that that many movies in. <laughs> um, His twist should be there's no twist. That That's what it should be from now on. I mean, he's back to twists. He's definitely doing those again. Yeah, I, um, I haven't seen old the beach that makes people is that old. out yeah as of this recording i've, I've seen the i haven't heard anything in, or know anything theaters, about it other than anyway. the trailer um yeah the six the signs signs didn't really have a twist i don't say thing per se other than like the aliens were real i guess but like that that's what we were building towards anyway but um uh the sixth sense yeah like obviously plot twists and Things were, you know, have been around since <laughs> forever, but that started a whole new era. I think of people like it is, is it is a defining plot twist. I think of of any medium, and it's it's just really solid because the movie starts off with the new kids on the block trying to kill. Does it really? Uh, blue. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Donnie Wahlberg. Donnie Wahlberg tries. To, he do you remember? Like he's the like the sickly patient that kills him in the very beginning of the movie. Oh, he yeah. stabs him. That's right. That's Donnie Wahlberg. It's it's been um, a long time since I'd seen it. all the major beats are still with me. But uh, right, yeah, I hadn't gone back and watched any parts of it because I just kind of remember the those bigger parts. But yeah, he dies at the beginning of the movie, but they don't. That's and they, they skip over the fact that he dies. They just kind of flash forward and like he's working another child like you know a, a child psychology case that's his profession and you just assume everything's hunky dory it's one of those like they show you lots of clues that he's dead the whole time and then once you realize you, you like it doesn't the, flash back i don't think literally but you think back like when you watch it again you're like oh shit yeah like his wife didn't even see him like he didn't she didn't know he was there they kind of painted it as like they're drifting apart but like he's just she doesn't even know he's there. Drifting he's real dead. far apart. Yeah. <laughs> At least yeah, six feet. It was, it was really effective. And it, it it ties back into the plot, too, in a way that it's not like just some out of left field like uh, thing. It's like, oh, he was dead the whole time. Yeah, but he's talking to a kid that can see dead. It's like it, it, it falls back into itself as opposed to like, oh, it was all a dream. He woke up and that's the plot twist. Well, you know it was, I mean? it's similar to Tim's Scrubs reference in that you don't realize what's being directly told to you until a second viewing, and then all the signs are actually there. Because they also mentioned, I think, they had stuff to do with color. Oh, the red or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. There's always something involving color with all the different scenes. If you see a specific color, it means that something ghost-related is actually happening, so on and so forth. Mm hum ho hum there there's like scary element not it's not a horror movie i wouldn't call it a horror but it's just like sometimes seeing the, the it's dead, that unnerve the I, ghost. I like to yeah. call those scenes unnerving because they're not yeah. scary they're not uh but they're difficult to watch yeah yeah like when that the dead girl like just appears under the bed and like pushes like the evidence out like yeah that's or... <laughs> that's the one i always remember yeah um but yeah it's like kid with like the back of his head missing or whatever it was yeah let's go play with my dad's gun oh and like i think it was a trailer a trailer scene but uh tony collette plays Haley joel osmond's mom when they're in the car like it's like he's like somebody died like 
he was killed. And we're like, how do you know? And he's like, he's, he's standing next to my window. And the mom's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I feel like parents across the country have those moments with their kids where they say these crazy things. And they're like, that's probably why I, makes their hairs stand up. That's why I don't want kids. <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want like a... a, a channel for the dead to speak to you it's like you <laughs> that's see the main reason cats just staring into the wall and there's nothing there but they're clearly fixated on something and you know that yeah. no, there's no bugs or anything there now imagine if the cat can talk and it's just a little child instead <laughs> like, daddy who's that <laughs> who's who <laughs> the person over there and you look and there's nothing there you're like i'm not looking i know there's nobody there my on that note, my mom told us I have three older sisters, and she That's said what that she all. Told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Dean, it happened as yesterday. You, know, you have a... three older sisters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I, know I was like, are we in a movie, mom? Are you explaining the plot? Um. Anyway, here's breakfast. <laughs> Thanks for the toast. Gotta run. <laughs> um, she said that as infants, like all four of us like would do this thing where we would stare at the bottom of our stairs that lead up to the second floor and just slowly just like like we're watching something go up the stairs she said we all did that and uh she believes we we're being visited by dead relatives they were freaked out but at the same time we're like it's just nice people because nothing bad happens it's nice <laughs> nice visits she I has mean... lots of she has lots of unexplained occurrences that go on in that house it's an old house from the 1800s too so i wish i had the awareness as a child to rope my brother into planning stuff like that (laughs) (laughs) you don't see it mom (laughs) my like she'd have me like committed (laughs) you research you research like a, a death that happened like a long time ago and like plan all these clues but uh, yeah, Six Sense is a great, great effective twist. What a twist! That's one of those like you always. I I wonder how that goes. Like opening weekend, everybody's talking about it. It's like that's an ultimate spoiler that you really don't want to know about when you go to see it. So. Wow! What an ending! Who'd have thought Darth Vader was Luke Skywalker's father? Ah, oh, thank, thank you. Oh, thank you, Mister Blow the picture for me. I mean, that's the the thing that I own. I love the the advent of um, the internet. Uh, it's a terrific thing. <laughs> but it really takes the steam out of like the ability to watch some of these movies or have some of these movies released. Like we were talking about the top of the show, or it might have been the pre-show. Um, literally everything nowadays gets leaked or released early for various reasons. Just because everybody... like. If you have a phone on you, you can snap a picture, throw it online. Everybody knows. Sell that photo to like TMZ or something. But you don't get to experience all these movies with all these twists unless you just go radio silent on internet, which is what I have to do on certain things. You know what the worst, honestly, the worst part is? It's not even the journalists on major websites. It's all of the different YouTube and smaller personalities that are trying to take a piece of the cake. And mm-hmm. trying to make themselves a, a name for themselves. Um, I'm going to go on a rant in regards to Star Wars because I don't get to do this often. Here we go. It's happening. Oh my God. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody just calm down. One of the biggest YouTubers and just faces of Star Wars currently is Star Wars Theory. And he has this huge following, and he's one of the big names when it comes to any kind of um, real-life Star Wars stuff. Like, you go to him for any kind of, like, movie news, this and that. And I was following him for quite a while until the finale for The Mandalorian. Because that's the one time that, just like every other show, if you don't watch it at 3 a.m. when it comes out, you're going to get spoiled by the second you wake up in the morning. And sure enough, that was the one episode I couldn't watch. And the entire season, he alluded to never being able to take off his mask. So what does this YouTuber do? His thumbnail is of him removing the mask. Are you dense? I don't 
N- normally, I don't bother messaging any of these types of personalities because 90% of the time, more than that, they're never going to see it, much less reply to it. But I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, bad form. Why would you do this? This yeah. is such a huge spoiler for this show that so many people are watching. So, yeah, we want you want to make sure people watch your fucking reaction to it. I hate reaction <laughs> videos, by the way, but that's a whole different story. But anyway, <laughs> it really upset me. I agree on reaction videos. <laughs> to, we're on Zoom. So they can see my face. Obviously, the listeners cannot. But every time it's just... No one, no one fucking Every, watches it like everybody that. knows what you mean. Everybody knows the exact face you just made. Yeah, <laughs> nobody, nobody responds and reacts to it that way, and it's just so infuriating on how like cartoon and animated it is. In actual reality, no one, no one does that. It's it's not funny. It's not fun. I I never understood it. Maybe it's me being an old man, but it's just so fucking stupid. But regardless. I don't care about your reaction to this. If you're going to reveal one of the biggest plot points of the last nine goddamn episodes in your fucking thumbnail, that is so poor taste for what it is. It is just so ridiculous. Whatever. Anyway, I'm done. That's when, um, I mean, I agree up and down. That's that just that, that plot point is when he's, uh, he's like injured, right? And getting cared for or something. Yeah. So he has to take it off. Yeah. Yeah. I think he Pivotal. just got warm. <laughs> <laughs> he was real sweaty under that. Huh? Very end of the the season, he just takes it off. He goes, <sighs> and then he puts it back on. <laughs> it's tough being a Mandalorian sometimes. <laughs> he pours a bottle of Poland's brings water label out over his head. Just make it a COVID thing. He's like, but I do it because it protects me. It protects others. <laughs> <laughs> he has another smaller Mandalorian mask underneath that. <laughs> airplane <laughs> or that gif where that guy has a bucket on his head he's running from the other guy and it gets oh. knocked off and there's another bucket under his head <laughs> but yeah I, I i hate the internet nowadays because you can't if there's anything that you're actively enjoying and watching unless you watch game of thrones was like that too god forbid you went anywhere on the internet the day after a major show or anything that you're watching was premiered because the next three days are just spoiler territory. So you have to walk around work with your, you know, fingers in your ears, just trying to not overhear anything because of course everyone's going to be talking about it. And the internet is even worse because they put that shit in headlines and stuff. And I, um, I, I got lucky with breaking bad. I caught up to the, the broadcast of the final few episodes. Hmm. Um, but I managed to stay spoiler free pretty much for that entire series as popular as it was. Have you seen Better Call Saul? I watched the first two seasons. I didn't stop watching for any particular reason, but I really need to go back and like finish that because that was excellent. The final season's coming out in the next couple of months. Shit, I guess it's time to start now. <laughs> yeah, it's worth it. I benched that. I'll do the same thing. I didn't think yeah, it was going to be first two ap- anywhere near as good as Breaking Bad, and I I think it is. Yeah, it's excellent. I mean, it's the same, cre- it's the same creator, right? Yeah. yeah. It's great. The stakes are different. So, obviously, right. a lot of people are saying, oh, it's not as good as Breaking Bad, but I think because the stakes are different, it just now comparing apples to oranges so yeah but in terms of quality and that same thrill of watching every breaking bad episode with the new reveals and the way the plot constantly thickens i think they do it just as well here they say it's a slow burn but i never felt that at any point yeah it's when every episode is just so interesting to watch and experience it's like take as much time as you need yeah but um so that's we the steer this back. Sense. <laughs> the sixth sense. <laughs> what a twist! So, Tim, what's yours? That, that brings me to my number one. It is a, a 1986 movie, uh, which is a horror movie. Um, surprise, surprise. Called April Fool's Day. So go watch April Fool's Day and then come back. Otherwise, skip to the end of whatever this is. April Fool's Day ends after one hour, 32 minutes, 43 seconds. 
April Fool's Day is one of my favorite horror movies. Paramount Pictures cordially invites you to the party to end all parties. Just from the the fun location of kind of this mansion on an island to the fun cast of characters, because it's uh, um, like a fun Deborah Foreman role as the hostess Muffy. Uh, we have Clayton Roner that everybody probably recognizes, and um, Thomas F. Wilson in a non-Biff role. They they're like buddies and whatnot, so it's nice to see him playing like a a likable chap. But the the movie itself is a girl invites all of these friends to her mansion, spend a weekend together, and then one by one, they're getting bumped off. And the crew begins kind of finding clues that everything isn't what it seems and that um, there may be something going on with their friend Muffy and that there may be some like sinister history here of like a sister and things like that. So it kind of continues on in this very Agatha Christie, uh, everybody kind of, and then the word none kind of deal. But with our last two of the group remaining, we get the big reveal in the living room that instead of having all of their friends' bodies kind of displayed in there, a la like, uh, happy birthday to me, they have all of the friends casually hanging out and just like talking, playing games, and just kind of chilling. And you get revealed that none of them are dead and none of them have died because the big April Fool's to the two remaining is that this entire weekend was a setup and a test run for her to try out her new idea of doing like a, a murder mystery bed and breakfast kind of deal at her family's mansion. And all of like the, the dock worker, the guys that got called in like to deal with other problems, all of them are like family of hers. And as she was bumping off each person from the group, she was filling them in on it and letting them know so they wouldn't give away what was happening. So the entire thing has just been this big kind of like fake <laughs> situate, like fake slasher um, before we find all of this out. And I think it's, it's always fun because after like, I, I love horror movies and I love slasher movies and this sits on the high spot just because of the movie ending on that happier note of you being able to kind of like these characters, enjoy these characters, and be able to have all of this, but then end it on, yeah, none of them are dead. All of them are had a great weekend. They're all hanging out, and they're having a good time. What a twist! It's almost like it, an alternate universe of Until Dawn. Yeah. Does it... Um... Oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's okay. I just, like, it was so... Oh, is it... Does it is it have those moments where you look back and um, you're like that didn't make sense. like it showed them like stabbing him to death like did that make sense or do they kind of hide things so that you it's they they're not just like writing it that way like it makes sense that nobody's actually dead. Um, if I recall, it's done with like cutaways and things like that that okay. you can go back and be like oh, okay so yeah they didn't Implied. necessarily die here. Okay. Um, and then whenever anybody finds like the body or something, it's one of her family that's working with her does all of the the special effects work for it. Gotcha. So they're like, yep, we did the mold. We recreated like a, a body or all of these things <laughs> wow. to like, have. Um, so, yeah, it's I, I watch it every year. Elaborate as hell. So that's Day. that's an 86. I didn't yep. realize it was an 80s movie. I think they did a remake in like the mid 2000s, but from what I recall, like it was not, it didn't follow the same thing and it was not, um, uh, it wasn't. <laughs> I imagine at the end of that movie, they walk in and it's like, it was all just a joke. And like, no, no, everybody's dead. <laughs> They're all dead. I'm dead. It was just a prank, Han. Ho, oh, ha, ha. <laughs> it kind of sounds like is it um is it michael douglas the game like that's all like that's all a fake i kind yeah of thriller right yeah i haven't seen that in years but from yeah. what i remember it was not that it, like the same case but it was a similar thing of like it's all an elaborate game of sort well it's the game it's an elaborate thing and it's not like actually People yeah, are dying. Nobody's people in are, danger. Yeah. I just forget the point of it. We're like, 
where they rat race, like just betting on like, hey, we're gonna see if you. I think it was or... Sean Penn plays his brother and said like, hey, I signed you up for this thing and yada yada and like, right. oh, it's gonna be like this fun whatever. And he starts to think like, no, this game is real. And then I, if I recall, like you find out like, oh, he, it actually is a game and it's yeah, not it's like real. A big party at the end. Yeah. I, I don't remember how the, the whole thing ends. So don't quote me on any of that. I've been meaning to go back and rewatch it. That just reminded me of, uh, of it sounded similar. Um, is this like a, does it, is it not tropey, but it kind of follows that formula and just kind of turns it, turns the, the whole plot on the up upended yeah because up until that point i mean it's like a traditional slasher movie right and she and like the main the blonde is the one that's like responsible for killing them uh the yeah i don't remember if deborah foreman is a blonde in the movie but yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> but i'm just checking out the then the then we're traded to, also the the cover makes no sense because like it's just a a drawing <laughs> um it doesn't actually match from what I recall of any of the people in the movie. But the... Thanks, marketing. They have a double twist at the... Well, not a twist, but just like they set you up at the end of after all of this is said and done, they have her like in her room, um, like playing with like a... She finds a jack-in-the-box sitting in her room and she ends up like starting to do it or something and you see somebody creeping in behind her. And then you, they jump at her with a knife, and you find out it's a fake knife, and it's one of her friends playing a joke on her now. And then the movie ends. And then she stabs him for real. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was another movie. I forgot the call, uh, what the name of it was. I think it was... I want to say it was Ruin Me. Um, it was on Shudder of the all these people sign up for this... Um, like this horror retreat thing of, oh, you go out into the woods and all of this and they're playing the solving the riddles and all of a sudden people start dying off and they are like oh the game is real um people are actually dying people have gone crazy and then you find out that like oh no it's not it's um a big game and they're all in on it for these people and they're all like hanging out at the bar and it's oh they're doing the post game wrap up and they're all having a good time and then all of a sudden it's like if the movie ended there great but then it goes on for like another 15 minutes where like I think somebody else goes crazy or like one of the people who they played the joke on goes crazy and then actually murders everyone. And it's like <laughs> you, you almost had it and then you ruined it. Which I guess makes sense if the name of the movie is Ruined Me, but still. <laughs> you like, can't it, it's, criticize our it's movie. It's a title, not a demand. Called. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, my number one pick, April Fool's Day. So, Nick, your number one pick. So I changed it from my original one. My my list was actually pretty obvious for a lot of them. For at least honorable mention's sake, it'd be weird not to mention Fight Club. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had that written down as well. Yeah. Um, American Psycho was another one. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and I removed it from my list only because I remembered who wrote it, and it was uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. It was such a great idea. And I really liked how the ending panned out. And the whole time I completely forgot on who wrote it. So you removed it from your list just to not give J.J. Abrams props. Right. That's why I refuse to say his name. It gives him power. So my final and actual pick of this evening will be The Last of Us on PlayStation. The Last of Us, skip over to one hour, 41 minutes, 48 seconds. Oh, not what I thought you were going with. Yep, and that's to subvert your expectations. (laughs) Oh, that was your... uh, What did you think he was going to say? Nick, would you kindly tell me what another option would have been? (laughs) Um, Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, you're going to go... Okay. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah. That's also a great, uh, also plot, a great re- one. plot reveal. I didn't think of Bi- Bioshock came up on a lot of the lists, but I didn't think the the plot twist was that big. At least not to mention here. I guess it is, but I didn't. I don't know. I don't know. Everyone played Bioshock anyway. Yeah. Um, Last of Us. The the plot. I didn't actually like the ending, 
but the entire journey leading to it was absolutely amazing. And the twist was the part that I actually didn't like. And it just didn't felt right. I don't know. I I don't remember what the twist was. So you escort L throughout the entire, you know, wasteland trying to get her to the facility so that they can develop the cure and she's like the key to it. And they realize that the only way to get the cure from her is to kill her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I didn't agree with that, especially like breaking out of breaking her out of the facility just to go back out on the run. I personally would have left her there. <laughs> In a world Deuces. where it just it, everything's fucked and you have the choice of actually curing it. I think that's a sacrifice that uh yeah. Yeah. That's one that's like take it to the grave. You you're also like that's like sacrificing your probably emotional well-being for the rest of your life but for the greater good yeah the great are good the greater good the greater good for the greater good justice i feel like also if if it was a case of uh <laughs> this worldwide problem and only your blood can fix this but we have to kill you i'd be like okay go for it just just put me in a statue also, over there yeah you know, also, as I get older, I feel like that bar gets lower and lower. <laughs> <laughs> While you'd sacrifice yourself for yeah. <laughs> We can save the world. We can save the continent. We can save the country. We These potholes save... on this street will get filled in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we can only do it with your body. Okay, as I'm climbing in. <laughs> Also, I don't know what pothole I can physically climb into. That'd be a pretty severe one. <laughs> Just put the stones over here. <laughs> then why don't you put why don't you put the stones in the entire hole? Shh, shh. <laughs> I've made my choice. I've made my choice. <laughs> we only we only have the four stones. <laughs> Humanity's last stone. Um, <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so The Last of Us is your top pick, and you hate it. Yeah. You hate the twist. It was. It made such an impact that you hate it. I guess it was a really amazing game. It that way, and it was just yeah. the opposite of what I was expecting. And I, I was see. Like, so it's effective in that way. And it, I don't even think it gave you the choice either. It uh, the narrative was you save her, and you escape from the facility, and that's at the end of the game. Most games at least give you that choice of like good ending, bad ending. And this one did not even do that. Pragmatist ending. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but Which I, guess... I haven't played the second one, but I heard um, a lot of people had a very strong reaction to the twists in the second one. Yeah. So if any of you guys out there are listening and you know the location of a PlayStation 5, you have three willing test subjects for owning said device. <laughs> actually don't you have one dean i have one. Oh, okay so i'm the playstation guy i've gotten several for people around here i've got a magic touch <laughs> yeah i don't think i'm gonna go back to xbox after uh after this what a twist there's just there's no exclusives that have been announced that i'm like oh man i've always been the playstation guy playstation 3 was my favorite console but no one had one and in order for me to play anything, I had to get the Xbox, and I eventually right. got the 360 toward its end of life, only because nobody uh, had a fucking PlayStation. And then once the next console came out, I didn't like the PS4, at least what it was at first. And the Xbox One just worked for what it was. A lot of people had one because of just the transition, and I think it kind of switched itself, and now everyone's going back to PlayStation, so I'll be able to finally join that bandwagon eventually. I mean, I definitely got the PlayStation for just for the like exclusives, like the big titles, because I, I love God of War and uh, uh, Uncharted. Like, those those big series are like Spider those kind of games. Are, yeah, Spider-Man. Those are reason enough for me to get the system yeah it's got plenty xbox i don't know that many and a lot of its exclusives either 
eventually hopped over to other consoles or even it's just available on PC. And if it's on PC, then it's not an exclusive, even if it is right. still Microsoft on both. So, right. Yep. I think there's not too much of a reason to get any new console right now. Like, there's no exclusive that's like really like you gotta get PlayStation Five or the new Xbox to like. Well, Xbox yeah. doesn't have The Last of Us, and that has the sequel. God of War came out, and that was amazing. I haven't finished it yet, and I know they're getting a sequel. Spider-Man right. That'll Miles be exclusive. Morales. The next God of War is exclusive to the five. Good. Um, More reason that I, I need to get that one. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Remake. I still didn't play from PS4, so... I'm just waiting to get a PS5 just because I had gotten rid of my PS4, and then they announced, like... And now, God of War, Spider-Man, uh, Final Fantasy sure. VII Remake, and... I haven't played Horizons Uncharted until game, since uh, Uncharted 3, and I didn't like that one. But that one, I felt they kind of rushed, and it was kind of buggy. I can't even recall the plot to that one. I just remember being on a rooftop, getting shot at by snipers with rocket launchers. And that was a good 30 <laughs> minutes of just pure hell. Because even if they miss hitting you, all it takes is the splash damage to kill you anyway. <laughs> the, four, the fourth one's a good little bow on the nathan drake uh saga um you find out he was dead the whole time <laughs> yeah. so, so yeah well we'll cut all of that and throw it into a little <laughs> nope i'm gonna cut everything except segment. the digressions <laughs> biggest plot twist we don't talk about one <laughs> good idea so you guys got anything else to say before i do our wrap up then trying to get an interruption ready perfect um okay gang that wraps up another episode of rule of thirds and we'd like to thank you for coming along for a ride and discussing our favorite twists as always you can reach us on instagram twitter facebook at screen refresh or shoot an email to screen refresh at gmail.com let us know what your top three would be or if you have any topics you want to hear us discuss that's it for us so for nick and dean this is tim have a great week and catch us next on screen refresh the first monday of the month Chinatown, that's a good one. That's a good classic twist. Also, um, they won't hear us next on Screen Refresh because we'll be doing a Halloween special before then. <gasps> what a twist. <laughs> what, what a <laughs> twist. <laughs> every, every mistake can be just passed off as it was a twist. <laughs> what a twist. <laughs>